Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have one of my favorite videos to create for you guys. You all know that I love a good Ikea hack and today I have four really fun projects. The little like bar that I'm creating, which is kind of inspired by a CB2 style bar towards the end of the video, is one of my favorite DIYs I think that I've ever done. It is just so cool and I cannot wait to style this in my home. I think I might put it in the entryway area because I'm going to be doing an entryway makeover towards the end of the month. And not only are these projects perfect to create for your own home, but they are also incredible incredible Christmas gift ideas, you guys. Like the vase that I'm creating this video cost me probably around $10 to make. And I would love to receive a gift like that from somebody. It is so cool and fun. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know, I absolutely love creating DIY holiday gifts. And I actually just wanted to share this here on my channel because this was actually a project I did in partnership with Home Depot and it was only over on my Instagram, but I really felt the need to share it here as well because how flippin' cute is this Fox holiday hanging planter? I am so obsessed with this. And you guys can find so many incredible DIY homemade gift ideas using the link below. Check out Home Depot's website. I'm going to link them below for you guys because there are so many different projects and I actually created this one for them. And of course, because we are in the month of December, I am doing so many giveaways. I want to really give back to a lot of you guys this holiday season because this year has been absolutely crazy for me and I am so, so excited and happy to see what comes in 2021. But I am going to be giving away two iPads at the end of this video, one for you and one for a friend. So definitely stay tuned until the end to see how to enter that giveaway. But let's go ahead and jump on into these Ikea hacks because they're so much fun and I cannot wait to share them with you guys. So let's get started. One of my most recreated projects is actually this basket light that I created quite a while back, probably about two years ago. It was an Ikea hacks video as well, and I figured let's go ahead and do an updated version today. So I absolutely love taking baskets like this one. This one here is from Ikea. It is the herring basket, and I'm also going to be using the Hema cord. This is just like a wall plug and cord. And what I started off by doing was flipping the basket over, and then I took the cord kit and I placed the top section where the light bulb actually kind of screws in on top, traced around it on the bottom side of the basket, and use an X-Acto knife just to cut out a hole shape here. Traditionally, I would probably use like a drill or a pair of scissors. However, the bottom of this particular basket is very, very hard for some reason. So I just felt like the X-Acto knife would be a little bit better in terms of keeping it intact. So that's exactly what I did. It took me a minute or two to cut through that section. And then I really wanted to camouflage that this was a basket. So I ended up cutting off those leather handles there, but I'm gonna keep those because I feel like I can use them in the future for something. And to finish off the project, all you have to do is just kind of tuck that cord kit right inside of that hole, flip it around to the opposite side, and you're going to screw on the little attachment that makes it stay in place, and then just screw your light bulb in, and you are good to go. This created such a cute, chic pendant lamp. I've been so in love with kind of distressed vintage style pottery lately, and I found this piece at Ikea here. It is a ceramic vase, and it was actually on sale for just about $5. And then I also grabbed some joint compound from my stash, and I am going to start off by kind of just using my finger and rubbing some joint compound on the entire exterior of this vase. Now, this color of vase is not my favorite. It's quite bright, so we are going to be transitioning this into a more moody, kind of vintage-inspired distressed piece. And I wanted to start off by creating a brand new texture on the front side. So that's what I'm doing with this joint compound here, and there's no rhyme or reason to this at all. You just want to kind of create a new texture. You're going to want to go ahead and let that joint compound fully dry down. And then what I did was I grabbed some black acrylic paint and some baking soda because we are going to be creating the iconic ceramic paint. So all you have to do for this is kind of mix equal parts of paint and baking soda. Of course, the more baking soda you add, the thicker consistency that you get. I traditionally like it to be a little bit thicker so I can add more texture. And you're going to want to go ahead and paint this on the entire exterior of the vase. But the great thing about this is I feel like I never have to do more than one coat for some reason when I do the baking soda paint. So that's amazing. I painted that's on the entire outside. I grab my heat tool to just speed up the process a little bit. And yes, you guys, this is actually a heat tool. So many people are like, that's not a heat tool. That is a hair dryer. And I'm like, no, it's an actual legit heat tool. And it's super quiet as well, which I love. So I'll try to link this below if I can find it online for you guys. I got this like 
eight or nine years ago. This is the texture that you get though. It is so cool and it's great as is. However, I'm taking it the extra step and I went outside, I grabbed some dirt from the garden and I'm mixing a little bit of water in there to create a mud consistency. And I'm just going to kind of like effortlessly paint this on the exterior of our vase. And the great thing about this is that when it dries down, all of the dirt and kind of sand residue settles in the cracks and it just discolors the paint a little bit and then you can go ahead and wipe it off. So as you can see here, as I'm drying the vase down, the actual black paint, it shifts a little bit and almost gets a little bit distressed and worn as if it's been outside for a long time, which that is the look I'm trying to go for. So once you are done with that, just go ahead and scrape off any excess dirt or mud and that's all there is to it. It's a really cute and expensive distressed pottery piece. Now this project here is not a hack. However, I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen this at Ikea. It is from the kid section and it is a weaving loom. I have never personally seen this before and I've never ever seen someone share it or talk about it on YouTube or anything of the nature. So I figured I was gonna go ahead and purchase this child's weaving loom and see if I can create something cute on it because I always love weaving. I have a weaving loom myself and this is just a fun little take on it and it was only 20 bucks. So I went ahead and followed the instructions and I put it together. It was so super easy to create, which I I loved that and then I also absolutely love the needle that it comes with it has a large eye which is great for thicker yarns and guys I also want to mention that I'm not going to go through an entire tutorial on how to weave in this video because I have an entire video on my channel dedicated to how to weave a tapestry like this and I also show how to create your very own loom as well so I'll put that in a card up top if you are curious however I'm just going through and I wanted to see if this was actually a workable usable loom and I can tell you guys right now it was incredible I've also never woven upright, if that makes sense. Like this loom stands up. I normally always just do it in my lap. So I went ahead and I just kind of grabbed an assortment of neutral color yarns. And I also added a little pop of green in there and created this really cute tapestry piece. So I'll just let you guys kind of watch as I create. I think a key element to any great tapestry is mixing up the textures and thicknesses of your yarns and then also kind of mixing up the tones of colors that you're using as well. And then on the bottom, just to finish it off, I wanted to add a simple little tassel here. So how I did that was I cut about 24 inches of yarn and I'm going to stick the halfway point or like the loop little section of the folded yarn from the backside to the front and then pull those little left and right strands on either side of our string. And you're just gonna slip those right through that hole that you originally pulled through, just pull it tight and push it up to the top of your tapestry there. And that creates a little tassel on the bottom there, which is very, very cute. I love having those in the bottom of my tapestry. It also easily makes it a lot longer so you don't have to weave it anymore. And I also went ahead and tied all my loose ends from where I kind of started and stopped the yarn. And then to take it off the loom, what I do is I just go ahead and I cut the two strands that are next to each other or the neighboring strands and I just tie them in a simple square knot until the top and bottom is removed from the loom. I don't exactly know if this is the most proper way to do it. However, I wanted to do it this way and I also opted to not add a wooden dowel to the top of this one. I'm doing a little bit of a different method. And the said method involves a little piece of cardboard or chipboard. I'm just cutting a small little section here that I'm going to be gluing on the backside just to add some stability to the top there because it's a pretty flimsy piece, of course, made of just yarn. I'm using some Fabri-Tac adhesive, gluing this to the top section that you guys can see. And then this is also the backside, by the way. And I'm also gonna go ahead and glue on a little hanging section, which just consists of about a 12 inch piece of yarn. I'm gonna tape that down while it dries on there. And that finishes off your tapestry, the Ikea loom worked incredibly highly suggested if you're in the market for one and yeah i love this project This is the project we have all been waiting for. I found this Ivar cabinet, Ivar cabinet at the as is section in Ikea. It was only $49 and I was like, let's go ahead and flip this. I had a vision in my head right when I saw it. And what I went ahead and did was I measured the length of the front of the door first because I found these half inch wooden dowels at Lowe's. They were $4.50 per eight foot section. And I ended up getting about 21 of these for the entire project. However, if you do have the skill set to cut down a piece of plywood into half inch 
section. You can totally do that as well. I just do not have the capability to do that. So I bought these half inch dowels and what I am doing is I'm first cutting them to be the exact height of my cabinet door fronts. Now the door fronts are actually a little bit different than the side pieces for some reason. I'm not sure why because they look pretty similar, but I ended up cutting a lot of these for the door fronts and then we're also going to be cutting them for the side pieces as well. But what we're going to start off by doing is just placing our farthest left little dowel section on and using a nail gun to nail it down. Now I started off with using one and a half inch nails, which ended up resulting in the nail going through the other side like this. So I ended up going back to Lowe's and I picked up some one inch nails, which as you can see are much shorter and they were perfect. So once I got back, I was able to continue on and this is actually a very simple process. All you have to do is place down one of your wooden dowels as a spacer and then place another dowel right next to it, butting it up to your spacer piece and then nail down your piece of wood and then pull out the spacer if that makes sense. I feel like this is a very hard thing to explain. It's a little bit more simple if you kind of see what I'm doing on the screen here. But basically what I'm doing is I'm placing down my wooden dowel and there's a spacer in between where I'm going to be spacing out the wood. So basically every half inch, there is a wooden dowel stapled out. However, it's just much easier to use a wooden dowel as a spacer since I want everything to be very symmetrical as well. So I finished the entire front of this cabinet by nail gunning down all of the wooden dowels across the front of it. And once this is stained, you can really see that texture. But as a light wood like this, it's kind of hard to tell. So I repeated the process across the other front door and you can kind of see how I'm doing it a little bit easier here. We are then going to go ahead and repeat the process on the sides as well because the main sections that are going to be showing are the sides and the top. So I cut out the wooden dowels and I repeated the same exact process by cutting them down and then nail gunning them to the side of the cabinet, both the left and right side. to go ahead and create the base for this, which I really think elevates the whole piece. So I grabbed these one by sixes and I cut out two pieces that were 27 inches and two pieces that were six and one quarter inch. Basically, we're going to be creating a box on the bottom using some of these two and a quarter inch screws. Very similar to my bench tutorial. If you guys remember, this is just such a simple woodworking technique, not even a technique because this is nothing crazy at all. I don't even know what I'm doing, but it seemed right in my head. So basically what I'm doing is I'm screwing through our longer sections into our shorter sections and we are going to be creating a wooden box, which is then going to be underneath our cabinet and prop it up and kind of give it a level of interest. And I just knew I needed to add some more detail to that bottom section as well. So what I did was I cut down these spare ending pieces from the dowels I cut originally. I cut them down to the same exact height of our little box section that's going to be the base of our cabinet and I stapled them around using the same exact technique. Now comes time to attach the pieces together. So of course I didn't add those little detail sections to the back side because no one's going to see that, but I'm going to be using these little L brackets here. I picked these up at the hardware store. Um, there's just simple two little screws that go on each side and it's going to be attaching our legs or the base to the cabinet itself. So I just went ahead and I added four of these all around the entire interior of the box. That's why I loved creating the box because it allowed me to easily attach these in. Once you have that on there, it's nice and sturdy and good to go. And of course we want a nice clean finish before staining. So I grab this stainable wood filler and I'm going to fill all of our little brad nail holes. And once that's dried down, just use a nice fine sandpaper to remove any of that filler residue over the top. So here you can see what we are working with so far. I am so obsessed with the base of this, but you really can't see the details. So I'm going to make this pop using some true black wood finish by Minwax. This is just like a wood stain. And I went in with a stain brush and I went around and painted the entire exterior, every single nook and cranny with this stain here. Now guys, I do suggest wearing gloves for this because I got it all over my hands and they were stained like crazy afterwards. However, it was totally worth it because this project turned out amazing in the 
end. And when I initially painted on the black wood stain, it was so dark, but as it dried, it kind of soaked into the wood and you can really see the wood grain through it, which is something I really wanted to see through was that wood grain while it still had that kind of like dark black wood look, if that makes sense. I let the stain dry overnight just so that it could really penetrate the wood. And then in the morning, I went ahead and I grabbed a drill and I'm going to be drilling through the front to add some handle poles. Originally, I wasn't gonna do this, but I loved these ones that I found at Lowe's. They were just like such a soft, warm toned, like golden silver color. They were just really pretty. They're almost like a champagne tone and that just finished off this cabinet. I love the outcome. And there you go, those are my Ikea hacks for you guys. I hope that you enjoyed these projects. I have to say, the bar was 100% my favorite. It can either be a bar or a cabinet, whatever you wanna use it as, a little storage hutch. I just really love the overall vibe of this piece. I think it looks really elevated and chic. And honestly, to create that bar for a little under $200, I think is an incredible price point. Um, I feel like typically these kinds of bars or cabinets are upwards of like $800 to $1,000. And I really, really love the way that this one turned out. And I hope that you guys did as well. And of course, you guys, it is giveaway time, which is the most exciting part of the video, I think. Actually, honestly, the projects were really fun. So so um, this is just like a little bonus added on, but I'm going to be giving away two iPads to a lucky winner today. So one winner is going to win two iPads, one for you and one for a friend or family member. I thought that was a great way to be able to give back to maybe someone in your life as well. And of course the rules are always so super simple to enter my giveaways. All you have to do is be subscribed to my channel and make sure that you turn on that bell icon next to the subscribe button. Um, I'll put a little animation up here on how to do that. Just click the subscribe button if you are not subscribed and if you already are, make sure that bell button is always clicked as well. Now there is going to be one other rule to enter this giveaway. You must be following me over on Instagram. So my Instagram is going to be on the screen here. It is Lone Fox Home. All you have to do to enter is find this photo over on my Instagram. Simply read the caption on there, leave a comment, and you are entered into today's giveaway. That is all you have to do. It is open 100% worldwide and I will make sure to also put the little ending date in the caption of that Instagram photo so you guys know when you can enter by. And yeah, that's really all. Super simple and easy to enter. And of course my giveaways are open 100% worldwide. So wherever you are in the world, I will gladly ship the products to you. Um, now, of course, I'm holding up my iPad, but the winner, I'm going to actually let you guys select your color and I'm just gonna ship it straight from the website. I was originally gonna go like to the actual Apple store and buy them and then come back and ship them, but I figured it would just honestly be easier and a little bit more safe to just stay home and then ship you guys exactly what you want. So I'm not picking out a color you don't want as well. So everything's customized, which is really, really nice. And of course, you guys, thank you so much for following and subscribing to my channel. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. I will catch you in my next one, of course. We have so much more fun content coming out this month. And yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Bye, guys.